For this example, we're going to be looking at and determining adjusting entries, posting those to the TA accounts, and then preparing an adjusted trial balance. So we have our trial balance here. So the trial balance represents the balance in all of our accounts before any adjustments are made. And then we have A through G here that tells us what has happened. So before we get going on doing the adjusting entries, we're going to go through, and all the TA accounts below, we're going to put in their beginning balances if they have one. Okay, so cash. Cash has a beginning balance of 12786 Okay, accounts receivable has a balance of 24840 um, Office supplies has a balance of $991. Let me take these out. Okay, and then rent, prepaid rent has a balance of 1400 Okay, so I'm just getting them from here and then filling them in below. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them in without um, scrolling. So then my um, office equipment has a balance of 6700 And then my Contra account for my office equipment, accumulated appreciation, has a balance of 1600 Accounts payable. Accounts payable has a balance of 1820 My liability notes payable has a balance of 10000 My unearned service revenue, which is also a liability account, has a balance of $2,860. So remember that just represents the amount that I owe in services to some individuals. And then I have another liability account, interest payable. And interest payable has a beginning balance, or I guess it doesn't have a beginning balance. Salaries doesn't have a beginning balance. My capital account has a beginning balance of twenty-nine thousand three three eighty-seven. My drawing has a beginning balance let's see of fifteen thousand. Service revenue, my revenue account also has a beginning balance of 58500 Salaries expense has a beginning balance of 33000 Utilities expense has a beginning balance of 1750 uh, Rent expense has a beginning balance of 7700 and no beginning balance, no beginning balance, no beginning balance. Okay, so that took a while to put all of our beginning balances in, but it's necessary as we go through and do our transactions. So we'll start with A. Ending inventory of office supplies is $86. So keep in mind that adjusting entries are always done for the amount that has been used or the amount that has been expired. So if this says my ending inventory is $86, that's not how much I used, that's how much I have left. So that's going to end up being my ending balance right here on office supplies. So if I take the 991 that I started with minus the 86 that I have left, I used $905 worth of office supplies. So I need to decrease my office supplies for the amount that was used and correctly show on the balance sheet that I only have $86. So when we do my adjusting entries for office supplies, I also need a debit. There's my credit, so I need to debit office supplies expense. So I'm going to go down here and find my office supplies expense. Okay, A for $950. So I have my debit and my credit. B, prepaid rent expired, $700. Okay, so prepaid rent expired, $700. I don't have to do any calculations there. That's telling me how much is expired. So I had $1,400 in my prepaid rent and $700 of it is expired. So now I have $700 left to use. So basically I probably had two months worth of prepaid rent. I just used one month and I have the amount for one month again. So the adjusting entry is my credit. I'm decreasing my prepaid rent. So then I'm going to find my rent expense and debit rent expense for $700. Okay, I had a beginning balance of $7,700. I'm going to um, debit it for $700. And since those are on the same side, 
we add them together. So now my rent expense has a balance of 8400 so that's how much I've paid out in rent. That's how much I've expensed in rent for the year. C, depreciation of office equipment for the period, $600. Again, I don't have to do any calculations here. It's telling me exactly how much my depreciation of office equipment is. We just have to remember that when we depreciate, we don't do anything with the actual office equipment account. It will stay the same. We're going to debit our depreciation expense and the credit the contra account accumulated depreciation for $600. So we're going to go down here and find our depreciation expense, and this is C. And depreciation of our office equipment is $600. And then I'll credit my accumulated depreciation for $600. And that's also transaction C. So I am here, just because the amount of boxes are there, I can see that I can go ahead and balance and this account has $2,200 in it now. So that's C. D, interest accrued on the note payable, $600. Okay, so I have to think of what's happening in this scenario. Interest is accruing, so there's no cash or anything involved. And keep in mind, with adjusting entries, you never adjust the um, cash account. Okay, so interest accrued on the note payable, $600. So I need to find the accounts involved, and I'm going to have um, interest expense because this is interest I owe to someone because it's a note payable. So I'm going to have um, $600 to my interest expense. So let's go down here and find interest expense. This is D, $600. And then I'm not paying it right now. It's only accrued, so I'll pay it later. So I'm going to credit interest payable for 600. Okay. I have salaries accrued at the end of the period. Same idea here. Salaries have accrued, which means my employees have earned money, they've worked, but they're not going to get paid until the next pay period. So it's just probably similar to many of your jobs. You get paid a week behind or a couple of weeks behind. So I need to expense this. The matching rule says expenses have to go in the period that they were actually expensed or incurred. So that $200 needs to go to salaries expense. And I believe this is transaction E. So salaries expense for $200. And so my new balance is 33200 Okay, so my debit is salaries expense. I'm not paying it yet, so my credit is going to be salaries payable, the amount of $200. E, salaries, oh, that was E. Did I put D? Okay, that was E. So we're ready for F. Service revenue still unearned at the end of the period, $1,410. Okay, so still unearned. We're talking about revenue that still has not been earned. So we're talking about our liability account. Let's see how much is it, 1,410. We're looking at our liability account unearned service revenue. Okay, so right now it has a balance of 2,860 in it. Okay, but it says still unearned. That means our balance is $1,410. That's the amount we have not yet earned. So we have to subtract and find out the amount that we have earned, which is 1450 So what happens in this scenario, we take the amount that we have earned, we take it out of our liability unearned, and move it into our revenue account, service revenue. So this will be F, and it will be an amount of $1,450. Our last one, G, service revenue earned but not billed. Okay, so service revenue earned. That means we've earned it, so we have to record it. We've earned $600. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do my balance while I'm here. I've earned $600, but it says not yet billed. Okay, it doesn't, they haven't paid me, but I'm going to bill them pretty soon. But the simple fact that I've provided the service means they do owe me. So I'm going to go to my accounts receivable and put the 600 there to show that they now owe me that because I performed the service 
and I can do my balance 25,440 while I'm here. Okay, so that gets me through A through G. Now I have balances on all of my accounts and what we're going to do next is we're going to prepare an adjusted trial balance. Now remember adjusted trial balance is just the balance of all of my accounts after adjustments have been made. So what I'm going to do is I have to scroll through and I'll put them in order that you see in the T accounts. Cash, accounts receivable. This balance will go to cash. This balance will go to accounts receivable. This balance will go to office supplies. Sorry. Okay, so to save a little time in your guys' listening, I went ahead, um, you saw where everything came from the T accounts, and I went ahead and put it in um, for the adjusted trial balance. And again, they go in the order that they were listed in the T accounts. On a trial balance, we always have assets, liabilities, capital drawing, revenues, and all of our expenses. And then they're listed on their correct debit or credit column. And then we sum them all together. Our debits equal our credits of 106167